Well, I really hate to sound like a giant nerd, but unfortunately, I'm going to right now. This is going to be a very exciting video for us. It's time for us to go ahead and create a host pool and to go ahead and take this host pool and test it. Make sure we can get into a wonderful virtual desktop environment. Now, what I highly recommend you do anytime you're doing a large infrastructure project like this in Azure is just to pre-build any of the resources you absolutely know you're going to need. So one of the things that will be great to use would be a resource group for this project that we are doing. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create in my Azure subscription a new resource group and I'll just name this test two. Notice I'm gonna use the test and then the number designation for this little project. So I'm gonna review these settings and then go ahead and create these settings. And so now we have this new resource group, awesome. So another thing that we're gonna need is a virtual network. The virtual network is going to be used to connect the virtual desktop environment to the Azure Active Directory. I'm going to go ahead and use our pre-built uh, and ready to go Azure Active Directory for the Active Directory that will be used in our virtual desktop environment. So I'm going to create a new virtual network here and we are putting this in our Azure subscription. And guess what? We have created the test two resource group and we'll make this virtual network part of that. And then we'll call this, how about virtual network underscore test two. And that's in the East US region. We're gonna review and create. Oh, and wait a minute. We don't wanna skip over any potential settings. So let's go to the IP address area. And here you can see that we're going to be using the 10.0.0.0/16 IPv4 address space, and that is just fine. And we are going to be using the default subnet of 10.0.0.0/24. This is all great uh, from a security perspective. We're not doing Bastion host. We're not doing any of these special security settings. We don't have to use tags. Tags are a great flexible way for you to add other labels that you can use for searching and, you know, organizing billing information and things of that nature. So we're all set here. We're going to create this wonderful virtual network that we can utilize in order to, again, connect the Azure virtual desktop environment to the Azure Active Directory environment. So I'm gonna go back home now that that uh, is all set up properly. And I guess the last thing we should do is let's go into Azure Active Directory and let's go to users and let's create a new user account that is going to be used for this virtual machine access. So we're gonna create a new user and the user name is going to be, how about uh, test to admin? And that's going to be at and our, our uh, domain that we are utilizing here, a little, you know, sample test domain that we got from Microsoft. All right. I'm going to say uh, the, the, uh, the actual full name will be test two. That's fine. We don't have to give a first name or last name. And we will create the password. Uh, let's actually, let's do this. We can, uh, will it allow us to give the, no, it's either auto-generated or we have to create the initial password. All right, let's do it this way then. We will create the initial password. So uh, that way I'll know what that is without worrying about uh, the clipboard or anything like that. So one minute here. Let me put in a password that I will remember. Okay, perfect. And it looks like that's all we would need. So we are going to create that user account in the Azure Active Directory. And there it is, the test2 admin user account. Perfect. All right, now we are ready to go over to Microsoft Azure. And I'll tell you, now that we have created 
those resources that we're going to want or maybe even need when we are working with the Azure Virtual Desktop feature and the host pool creation, now that those are created, it's going to be so quick and easy to create our host pool. So notice we are going to create the host pool in a resource group we created called Test2. We are going to name this uh, host pool. How about the Test2 underscore host pool? There we go. And that's in East US. And we're not going to do a validation environment. More on that later when we talk about security. And let's take that pool type setting, and this is a pooled environment. And we'll do a depth first load balancing approach where it will take our virtual machines and try and really load them up with users before it moves to another virtual machine. And by the way, we're in a very small test environment, so I'll limit the maximum sessions uh, simultaneous to three. We're going to review these settings. Uh, wait a minute, did we skip stuff here? Yeah, of course we did. So I think we, uh, yeah, all we did was we set up the basics and we don't want to review and create from there. Next, we want to go to the virtual machine step. So I'm going to go ahead in here and say, yes, we want to add an Azure virtual machine. The resource group is test2, perfect. We'll give a prefix name here of test2 and we'll make sure that's East US. For the availability zone, we don't need any, uh, for the availability options rather, we don't need to test any redundancy with infrastructure at this point. Security type standards, fine. Image type is gonna be from the gallery. And what do you think? We try the Windows 11 Enterprise multi-session on for size. Yeah, that'll be a fun test. The number of VMs that we want created is going to be two. And we will do the standard SSD. We don't need any fancy boot diagnostics. And for the virtual network, we're going to go ahead and do the VN test two. There's that default subnet. We'll do a basic network security group. We don't need public inbound port access to this VM. And the domain to join is going to be the Azure Active Directory domain. We're not going to enroll within Tune. And the administrator account username is test2admin. And we know that the password is that initial password that I set which was, uh, yeah, there we go. I got it typed in properly. And now uh, one of the big things you got to watch out for in a situation like this is notice, even though I'm getting the check marks here, it's not actually doing the authentication check. No. So if you don't have those credentials right, the spin up will fail. So we are next going to go to the workspace step. And this is where we can do that desktop app group, which is going to define what applications that the users get. So we need to create a new workspace and we'll create the test two workspace and say, OK. And now we can deploy apps out to uh, this pooled resource. So cool. Next, there's the advanced settings where we can enable diagnostics, but we don't need that. We're not going to do anything with tagging. So now we really are ready to review and create our host pool. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And it is going to bring us to a screen that's going to allow us to monitor the progress of this creation. So this is a perfect time for me to go ahead and hit the stop button on this video. And what we'll do is we'll pick up with a subsequent video because this one's getting awfully long. So we'll stop here and we'll pick up with our next video to show you how this deployment progressed and how we can validate it.